right, Panther fans, here we go, here we go. So, as we, uh, as everybody expected, as it, we got the Leafs, right? No, no, no Leafs. No trees, no leaves, no grass, nothing. Just lightning, that's what we got. And I hope that's what we wanted, because uh, <laughs> that's what we got. So, in terms of how we do our previews here, I'm not a numbers guy, not an analytics guy. I don't have any graphics. I got nothing but my gut. Now, now last year in my playoff preview to the first round, Boston uh, versus Panthers, I predicted Carter Verhage in triple overtime in Game 7. We all know how that went. I didn't get it exactly right, but I think close enough. We'll put it that way. That is why that clip that you all see in the beginning of the fight song, that's why I was screaming for Hagee in overtime, for Hagee in overtime, because over the course of the seven games with the craziness and everything like that, and getting to game seven and now we're in overtime, I had forgotten that that's what I had said. I know I had said, I knew I had said it, but I wasn't watching the game going for Hagee in overtime. It was gone out of my mind. So... When he scored, um, obviously I was excited that we won, and me screaming for Hagee in overtime was in real time my realization that, oh crap, I called it, that's right, for Hagee in overtime. So that is, that's what explains that clip. Now in terms of this season, I thought about it, thought about it, and I thought about it, and, and there's, there's what I think is going to happen, what I want to happen, what I would be concerned might happen, and we all know that this is basically going to come down to Bubba versus Vasilevsky. What I will say, um, Panthers in six. That's the way it needs to go down. I do not feel that Tampa's just going to bow out in five. And I don't feel like it would be smart to give Andre Vasilevsky and a team that knows how to win a Stanley Cup I don't feel like it would be smart to give them game seven either. Especially, yeah, it would, it would be game seven would be in Florida. But the whole thing's in Florida. You can throw a rock between the two arenas. So, yes, there will be a home ice advantage technically for the Panthers. But let's not pretend like there won't be Lightning fans in Florida and Panther fans in Tampa. It's going to be a mixed bag all the way. Now, why do I think Panthers in six? Depth. Depth. I know, I know um, Tampa, you know, has lost Sergeyev, but they've pretty much overcome that for the most part. In many, in the same way, uh, when the Panthers miss Ekblad, we do our best to overcome that way. Now, in terms of the Panthers' injury situation, we're expecting to have everybody back. Uh, I, I'm just going to assume that Nick Cousins is going to be sent back down to the fourth line and you will have Verhege on that second line because they want to leave Tarasenko up top, putting Rodriguez on the third line. I don't have a general problem starting things off that way. However, short leash, like really, really short leash. Like, should we have a bad period with that setup of lines? Should Rodriguez give Kucherov one stupid power play? All right? Boom. Immediately to the fourth line with him. Cousins on the second line. Tarasenko with Lundell loose to Reinen. And Verhege up top. And the fact of the matter is that we have the ability to do that in multiple different ways. Right? Because we've got this guy, Nick Cousins, who doesn't belong on anybody else's top six, top nine. He's a fourth line guy. But you put it with Bennett and Kachuk, and unicorns and rainbows rain from the sky, at least for a while, until, you know, it kind of tapers off a little bit. So we have an advantage in being able to call, we'll call it the Cousins card. We can call, we can put Cousins in, manipulate the top nine the rest of the way, and actually end up playing better. So there's that. Now, in terms of Tampa, we know, look, they've still got the guys, all right? Yeah, they're a little bit older, right? And maybe we will have a speed advantage over them. But it's all going to come down to Andre Vasilevsky. And what I said before the season started was Vasilevsky is closing in on 30. 
he had a you know he had an injury it was basically his first real big injury of his career where he really missed time and so when you have a goaltender in that zone it might take him half a year or might take him a full season to round back into whatever form he's going to be he may never be you know he may have lost five percent he might have lost ten percent you don't know you can't turn 30 and have that injury without having lost something Bobrovsky is not as quick as he was in Columbus you can watch the highlights and see but his smarts and his anticipation of things make up for that little bit of a lost step Vasilevsky is still learning to play within himself but I am not going to take uh, his regular season performance too much uh, to mean too much here. You know what I mean? All right, if there's any team that knows how to flip that switch, it's Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, does Vasilevsky have that switch? We're going to find out probably the first period of the first game. And if Vasilevsky plays like he did in years past, I still feel like this Panther team can win and should win this series because of the depth. But that said, you do not want to leave the door open too much for this Tampa team. The way I see this series going and the way I think it can go that will allow us to win the series while Tampa keeps it respectable. We need to win game one. I think Tampa will even it up in game two. I think we will win game three. Tampa evens it up in game four. And then we'll take five and six. You do not, I repeat, you do not want to give Tampa Bay a lead in this series. You cannot lose game one. All right? You want to win, lose, win, lose. You can win, lose the whole rest of the way. That six games, game seven would be a win. But I'm not interested, like I said, in a Andre Vasilevsky Tampa Bay Lightning game seven. Because that's one game. And if anybody can pull out a 50 save shutout in one game as Andre Vasilevsky. So that remains there. Now, the other thing. Um, that is going to be a factor, could be a factor in this series, is if you have a four-overtime game or if Bob has a bad game. For whatever reason, if you need to go to Stolarz, we're good. We're good. You can throw Stolarz out there for a game, and as long as he continues his performance he's had so far in the regular season, we should not lose too much there. Where with Tampa, if Vasilevsky's not going, if he cannot rekindle his previous form it could be over quick for tampa but then again then again tampa won cups by being able to win both ways okay i said that then i'll say it again now now the panthers are very they are molded very much in that same way they can beat you they can beat you run and gun they can beat you if you want to get physical if Vasilevsky is not up to form that is not a guarantee that tampa is just going to get routed in this series they can, they have the ability to say, okay, uh, we're not getting the goaltending, Let, let's go. We're going to have to go heavy on the offense. They have the ability to do that. Now, if they want to go run and gun, I think we're going to win that series too because I feel like we've got a higher, you know, higher caliber offense spread across the board, our depth pieces, okay? We're going to need Wendell, Lusterainen, and whoever's on the third line with them for that shift, because sometimes it goes from shift to shift. It at least goes from period to period. We're going to need the lundell and pair, okay, to step it up a notch. Now, we saw them do that in last year's playoffs, especially as things went on. And, of course, Lusterinen got a, you know, broke his foot blocking the shots and no blocking shots. But they're going to have to watch us because it's the playoffs. And that's the chances that we're going to take. So that line is going to be key, that third line. Lundell has a he has a top six pedigree in him whether or not the reason he has not performed up to what you would consider a 1c to be whether or not that has to do with the system that maurice the the job that maurice has asked him to do whether or not he really doesn't have that kind of ability or it also could kind of be like you know if you're anton lundell you kind of know it's barkoff bennett lundell and it needs to be that way for however long it's going to be that way for this team to win a cup. So I think Mundell, he, uh, we know he takes his defensive responsibilities extremely, extremely seriously. But he may not, he may never develop, in quotes, to be that 1C caliber player. 
simply because he's a 3C and he knows that he's going to be 3C on this team as long as Barkoff is here for another, I mean, at least another five years of Barkoff being your 1C. If we re-sign Sam Bennett next year, that's at least another five years. So Anton Lundell is not in a rush, right? He's also, what, 23, 22, 20? I think he's 23 now. So he's still four or five years away from, quote, his real prime where the physical ability matches up at the peak with his smarts and he's already a very smart player but we're going to need that line to pick it up in, in in the playoffs now we are also going to need for the love of god i know this is as cliche as it gets but against tampa especially stay out of the box this is my gripe with evan rodriguez okay now i know that we have not been as sharply mentally engaged this last month as we would be it's might maybe it's been almost two months that we've just been taking mental mistakes and mental penalties because we just kind of like yeah we gotta play again all right now they need to be able to flip that switch again and be as focused and mentally engaged as they possibly can if they take stupid penalties tampa is going to make us pay we do not want to be playing from behind in the series we do not want to be playing from behind in the game because, again, Vasilevsky, you give Vasilevsky a 2 0 lead, that is one thing the Panthers have not really been strong at is holding leads. So I, I guess I'm saying both things. Keep it close. Don't get too far ahead, Florida, because we, we're known to blow leads. But you don't want to give Tampa a 2 0 lead because, again, Vasilevsky, he could look at the clock and be like, I only got to play lights out for another. 14 minutes, I'm good, I'm good, let's go, and nothing's going to get past them. In the end, I suspect, let's put it this way, for all of the reasons, for hockey reasons, for reasons of what the fan base would go through if we lost, and for reasons of, uh, we'll just say, as the Panthers have coined this uh, postseason run, redemption, I do feel like six games seems like a legitimate, reasonable expectation for the Panthers to have in this series. What you do not want to do, I'll tell you what you do not want to do. You do not want to go into game six with a 3-2 to two series lead, get a lead in game six, and then lose it and have to go to game seven. If you leave the door open for this land, I can't talk. If you leave the door open for this lightning team, they're liable to break it down. Get ahead early. I'm not expecting it to be 4 nothing. But if you get a 2 nothing lead on this team, shut it the hell down and don't even let them into the zone. And that's the last thing I'll say is that this is a completely different Panther team than from the one that we played them the two series um, you know, before Kachuk got here. We've had the regular season stuff, but as we've all seen, the regular season, especially when it comes to Panthers lightning, it don't mean a whole lot. Okay, It doesn't mean a lot. Now, the one advantage that we do have, or disadvantage, depending on how you want to take it, in terms of we kind of were expecting the Leafs, and then, oops, we got the Lightning. Um, Tampa is not going to let us ease into this series, okay? Toronto would have, quote, matched our physicality, I think, a little bit. They might have come out and banged the, bat, you know, banged the body here or there, but I think if we would have just been playing, you know, at a mid-level of engagement, like a 7 Toronto was going to match that seven, at least in the first game. Tampa is going to come out, and they're going to be at a 10-plus immediately from the first drop of the first puck. And we're going to have to match them because, yeah, the first two games are at home, but it's not exactly uh, a difficult road trip from the Lightning. you got to get game one. If it ends up even after two games, okay. Keep yourself in the pocket of the lead. So what am I trying to say? Don't get into the pocket. You know what I'm trying to say. Keep the lead in the series. Leads in games, leads in series. Stay out of the box. And the last thing, of course, stay healthy. Now, look. Yes, we beat the crap out of Toronto. We beat the crap out of Kings playing an extraordinarily physical game. This team does not have to just slam into the boards every shift to win games. We can play physical in spots, but the advantage that this team has over, I suspect, every other team in the league is the ability to run threes, if not four, but even the top three. 
the fact though we can skate teams to death we can just keep coming and coming and coming and coming and coming in waves at you and you know you get down to the the next to the you know you get down to the next to the bottom line as Lundell loose to right and Rodriguez or if you got Tarasenko there or whatnot and we can skate teams to death we can we everybody has played with each other everybody has chemistry with each other so if you've got a half-assed Frankenstein line out there of Barkov, Kachuk, and Lusterainen, it's going to look good. They all look good together. And so that, to me, is the advantage that we have. Skate this team to death. The Lightning are not a young team. We don't need to shoulder them all night long. We don't need to risk hurting ourselves. We can skate this team to death. Just keep coming at them and coming at them. Wear them down that way. That's how we were doing it during that, see, uh, during that series of games this year where we like won 23 of 30 or so it was some ridiculous amount where we were on fire we weren't really being physical we just were out skating teams all night long until it finally cracked and you could see that we just had the advantage and we shut things down defensively and we were winning every night 4-1 4-2 4-1 4-1 2-1 2-0 um that's the key skate them to death we don't have to go out if you go out there and just think, hit guys, hit guys, hit guys. Yeah. We don't need to be taking injuries so early on. We can beat this team. You know, we want to match their physicality, but we don't need to do anything stupid. And of course, the referees are going to be looking for us to do something stupid. They're going to be looking for us to be doing sketchy things. We don't need to do that. Lightning or not a young team, we are. We can skate them to death, wear them out. As the series goes on, they get more worn out. You win game five, you win game six, and you move on. That's what I'd like to see happen, and that's what I think is going to happen. Um, in terms of you know, a Verhage and overtime-ish prediction, um, <laughs> I, I think Kyle picked. We're going to go with this one. Kyle, in his podcast today, he did a podcast for the members, and he says seven games. And what Kyle predicted was Kachuk in Game 7 in overtime. I'll take that. The problem is I won't be alive to see it. Because if we get to seven games against the Lightning in the first round, I don't, I'm don't. i fairly certain my heart won't. I don't know if I can handle that. I don't know. I, I'm not young, okay? <laughs> six games. If you want to keep Jaws alive, six games. If you want Jaws to die and Kyle to take over the channel after we win Game 7, then I guess we can go to overtime in game seven. <laughs> All right, that's it. Um, I may or may not have another video out. I am leaving a link in the description for the Flying Fluffy Bracket Challenge on NHL.com. You can join the league. First place is going to be a big Florida Panthers merchandise package. I pull from the eBay store and everything else like that. Um, I'm going to enter. But last year I won. <laughs> because I was the one that said Panthers versus Vegas in the finals. So, it's, you know, my bad. Um, but no. So this year I'm I'm going to play, but we'll make sure second place gets there. Gets th it was bad. After we lost the finals last year, it was just like, boop, I shut down. So I don't know who got second place last year. But we'll make it up to you this year. If 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 whoever got second place last year wins first place this year, we'll, we'll give you the double prize. <laughs> All right, everybody. Tomorrow, our last thing. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We will be completely covering the Boston and Toronto series. So we'll be streaming before that game, for the game, right? The whole deal. Recap, review, the whole, the whole thing. Now, the only change is going to be, of course... As soon as I said there would be a review every morning after hockey, they put the Panther game at 12.30 on Sunday. So there will not be a review Sunday morning before the Panther game because the Panthers are playing at noon. And Kyle just kind of looked at him and was like, how many hours in a row do you want us to work and be on camera? And I kind of agreed with him. So we'll see how it goes scheduling-wise. But at the very minimum, all the Panther games in all the Boston and Toronto games. That's going to be a fun series. So, All right, everybody. Appreciate all the support. Make sure you hit like, subscribe. New people, please help me get to 8,000. I wanted to say help me get to 10,000, but this is my eighth year. Help me get to 8,000 in, in eight years. That's, that's That should be reasonable.